if I am president, if I ever become president, I will get rid of the military industrial complex, the prison, and especially the prison industrial complex. No one should ever be exploited. No one. I will make sure that there are extremely powerful anti-exploitation laws, anti-discrimination laws, and that no one should ever be exploited or enslaved ever. Because today there is still slavery going on. There is still war profiteering going on. There is still all this bigotry going on. But not just bigotry, but greed. The root of everything is greed. Greed is a mental health illness that needs to be cured. And we can't pin it, oh, it's because he's Jewish, it's because he's this, it's because he's that. No, it's greed, period. It is in human nature to be greedy. We want more, we want more, we want more. Well, greed is a mental health illness, just like pedophilia is. Greed is a mental health illness illness. Oh, people say a little greed can go along, can, is not too bad? Oh, just like drinking poison is not too bad. Alcohol is poison. What happens if you drink too much of it? You become drunk. You can die from it. Well, greed is destroying not just people. It's destroying our entire society. It's destroying this very planet. It is literally destroying the planet. How much more clear can I be? It's not just destroying ourselves. It's destroying the planet. We're letting greed destroy the planet. Deforestation. Destruction of natural resources. Destruction of the air. How much more direct can I get because of greed? Oh, and not to mention the deaths of millions of people in war because of greed. Oh, military industrial complex. World War II. Greed. You know... Take, going to Iraq and Afghanistan and Vietnam. Greed, greed, greed. The root of all these wars was greed and dominance of the government. You know, a few people in the government controlling people. Special interests. Always greed. Greed is the root of all evil. Greed and uh, self-image. It's greed and, you know, the desire to be recognized or to be like, oh, look how famous I am. That's also another reason. Or to be looked at in a different way. So, But the real root of all evil is greed. Had it not been for capitalism, there would have never, or greed, there would have never been exploitation, there would have never been war, there would have never been anything. People would have just got along. Look, if it wasn't for greed, we wouldn't be going to other people's territories. You wouldn't have, back in ancient times, people fighting over land. Instead, they would have been sharing it equally. But greed is causing all this. Greed is the root of all evil. All of it. All, nearly all evil is caused by greed. I mean, everybody gets greedy. You know, you make money and then, you know, your hours get cut and you're working. And, you, and then you realize you don't have enough money so you, and, you're, and you get worried. That is a natural response of not having enough. If everybody had what they needed, this never would have been a problem. But you have people at the top who decide to keep everything from them, for themselves and not give anything to the people who actually work their, work their butts off. Look, who does most of the work? Workers. But now they realize, hey, we can get rid of them because now they, um, they don't do anything. So soon they're going to get rid of the workers. And then they're going to force the global population to, to decrease dramatically. They'll geoengineer this illness, I believe, or some sort of war, to dramatically reduce the global population. And then they will realize, because the people are starting to wake up, almost in the entire world has an extremely high literacy rate. And they know, they know how to read the internet. It's, it's waking people up. And now the, the greedy people... The people on the top are realizing that either, either they have to act or their time is up. And I fear they're going to act. And that act may be a war with North Korea. But, maybe not. They may instead try to exploit us, enslave us, and force us to work for them. That's the biggest fear. Because the prison industrial complex 
is uh, one way they can do it. They may decide to imprison half the population for various reasons and force them to work. Um, a lot of people today who are in prisons are in there for for varying reasons, usually very small things like drug possession, drug paraphernalia, uh, or just you know unpaid traffic tickets, just small reasons. And a small, a very small percent of population, maybe less than twenty percent of the prison population, is actually there for violent crimes like murder, assault, and in some cases, the assault charges are actually unfounded. Uh, maybe you got you were attacked and you were defending yourself and you might have a disability, who are the police going to go after? A person with a lot of money who is the aggressor, the person with a disability who, who was actually defending himself. Obviously, it's a second choice. A person with a disability who was defending himself. So if it's going to be, say somebody attacked me. I have autism. I ask, and I admit, I have autism. Who are the police going to go after? Say some rich person attacked me. Just had a bad day and decided to attack me and I punched him back. Who are the who are the people gonna go after? The people in power. Me or the person who started it all, even though he might have been and I might have just defended myself. Or even I just push him off of me. And he decided to press charges. And the police will obviously go after me because the rich person would likely win the case and I would likely lose. So obviously I will be the target. I'll be the scapegoat. And that's why so many people are in prison today. And usually, the prisoners are minorities, African Americans, and other racial minorities, and people with disabilities. People with disabilities actually make up a large part of the prison population. So yes. And what do they do in prison? They make uh, items for uh, companies. Now they make computers and knickknacks in prison. They make knickknacks like bags... Um, and you know how much they get paid? Almost nothing. They realize that uh, treating that paying workers what they deserve for hard work does the companies are going to fail. So the root of this is corporate greed. We need to get rid of these corporations and and bring back you know worker based economy. We need a worker based economy here in this country and in fact the world. It's not just here in America. But the entire world needs it because other countries are following suit. We were we were very progressive once, for and now we're regressing. America is one of the most regressive countries on earth. Heck, we might be first world, but we don't have universal health care. We don't have paid parental leave. Heck, we don't free education. The government only pays partially for our schools. And very sure, I'm very sure that because of how conservative the current administration is, that will be taken away very soon. And not to mention, I believe there will be another huge jump in, in, in the prison population under the current administration as well. Trump will probably pass new laws that will make criticizing him or, or his administration or the government a crime. So, what I'm doing now might be a crime in a couple of years, or maybe even sooner, so... I better do it now before it does become a crime. <laughs> anyway, we need to have we need to radically change the system here in this country. We need a p political revolution, and I don't mean just changing a couple things. We need to change everything. We need to start from scratch. We need to start start from scratch and build everything anew. But using the wealth and the infrastructure that we've built on. Marx advocated, uh, said that if a communist revolution would ever happen or, or countries ever to become communist, it would not be in countries like Russia or a third world country, but in America, a first world country. But Marx was proved wrong because the Soviet Union proved it to itself that even a third world nation, if, if it really wants to, can also become first world. But why are there so many third world countries and so many first, so many few first world nations? I mean, the reason for that is because the first world nations are holding back the third world nations. We, are, I'm serious, we are, especially America. America is really to blame for this. We are not giving our technologies to, to countries like Chad, Sudan, Ni Niger. We're not. 
we're keeping everything for ourselves. Well, not we, but the but the government is. We're not the corp the greedy corporations are not doing anything to help those people over there. But instead, focusing on how to make not this country, but the people here richer. As a matter of fact, nearly all the wealth in this country does go to the top ninety nine percent. I've realized that our economy, that the hundred, that all if. Every single billionaire in this country actually makes up about 30% of the U.S. economy. That is huge! Our economy is only $21 trillion. Yet, if you count every billionaire in this country, which is about 200 to 200, uh, about almost 300 million, some of them have 50 billion. We, there's almost, they make up about nearly 5% of the U.S. economy. At, at least, and that's just the billionaires. If you talk about the billionaires and the corporations, the corporations easily, you know, take about maybe half or more of the U.S. economy. And because of all these rich, you know, so all the wealth really is at the top one percent. When you look at it, the regular people have almost nothing. They have literally chump change, like, like maybe like pennies. If Say the say the um, say this entire room was a big piece of gold or 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 a bunch of coins, gold coins. Nearly every single coin goes to everybody, to the very few rich people, and maybe two or three coins are left on the floor for everybody else. That is basically what's going on. That is basically how uneven everything is. Back during the 1930s and uh, back during the 1940s and 50s, it was more even. The richest people and the poorest people had almost the same. Almost. It was pretty even. But now, ev- the, there's been such a huge shift of wealth, it's even worse than before the Depression. It's even worse. The, the uneven distribution of wealth in this country, and in fact around the world, has gotten worse than the Great Depression. I am serious. Even China, even, but the only countries that have a, a more even system of wealth are, are the Norwegian countries. Norway, Sweden, and Finland, and Denmark. They have a more equal system of wealth. America was also had a very equal system of wealth after, after Roosevelt. But then, just 20 years after Roosevelt, the conservatives once again took power, and that was once again reversed. And it's still continuing to this day. America needs a radical change. We need to get rid of the prison industrial complex. We need to bring back the labor unions. We need to bring them back in a big way. We need to make sure that the that the richest people pay their fair share of taxes. We need to get rid of the military industrial complex. We need to stop war profiteering. We need to never use war. I'm I'm completely against war. I'm a pacifist. But what we're doing right now, the reason we're doing all these sanctions against North Korea, Trump is trying to provoke North Korea to go into war. Because Trump is literally surrounded himself by people in the military and in the fossil fuel industry. Trump literally surrounded himself by the military industrial complex. And Trump will start a war with North Korea. It's not if, but, but when. And I believe it's going to be very soon. And the motive for this war is not really to take out Kim Jong-un or anything like that. It's just to create another needless war to, uh, to benefit his, uh, the people around him. That's the, real, that's the real reason. And yeah, maybe to install a puppet dictator or, or you know, something else you know, for American interests. Eh, or special interests. Not American interests. When I mean interests, I don't mean like to make sure our leaders are there. No, I mean capitalist interests, greed interests. I mean, Kim Jong-un is not a good guy. I thought we should have, if we invaded any country, it should have been North Korea. But, instead of invading the country, we should just give them aid. We should do so, do something in a way that would de-escalate the tension. I'm all for this de-escalation. Instead of putting all these sanctions against North Korea, against North Korea, we could turn North Korea into a pretty good country. I mean, North Vietnam. I mean, Vietnam is pretty pro- prosperous today. I mean, we left Vietnam alone, and they ended up pretty well. China is doing pretty well too. 
And here's the thing. If we actually helped out North Korea and bolstered their economy and actually helped them out, not only would would, uh, would North Korea not see us as enemies anymore, but things will be better overall. Heck, they might resume diplomatic te- uh, relations with South Korea. Maybe they, there might even be talks of maybe just having dis- dis- like they may have a, a different system of government in the north, different system of government in the south, but they may still be like they might still have an open border. They may even open up their borders. Like they can do that, but instead, people like Trump and conservatives are like, no. Uh, North Korea shouldn't be allowed there. Eh, eh, North Korea can't do this. Eh, you can't do this. The real reason isn't... Be- yes, North Korea is not a good country. Uh, I mean, the leader there isn't good, so... Um, and if anything happens, the people themselves might decide to overthrow the government, because look, Kim Jong-un is really shown to the world, to his people, that he's not good. But maybe it's all planned. The plan could be because, heck, he was educated here in the United States, Kim Jong-un. And maybe the plan is for North Korea and America to go to – North Korea and America to go to war. Like, planned. Like, you know, they agreed to do this to bolster the militaries. And and their special interests. It could be. But ultimately, I think Kim Jong-un – actually really cares for his country. I mean, he thinks he does, but he was educated in a way that he thinks that violence is the only uh, option, executing people. I believe, actually, violence solves nothing. And proof? I mean, look at uh, Norway. They're one of the best countries on Earth, and they haven't, they haven't executed people in over 100 years. They have, don't have life in prison. They're, they're the most democratic country on Earth. If anything, we should follow Norway's example. But, you know, except, you know, we're not a monarchy. North Korea, I mean, Norway has a, has a king and a queen, but they really don't have any power. But if we could adapt Norway's system of government, especially the prison, uh, their prison system, and truly rehabil- use prison to actually rehabilitate, rehabilitate people, like, like they do in Norway, where you actually still keep your, old, your previous job that you had before you went to prison... You wouldn't have reincarceration. Reincarceration would no, no longer exist, basically. Norway has one of the lowest reincarceration systems in the world. And I think America needs to change. Well, and we really do need a pro- political revolution in this country. Thank you for watching. Bye.